I'm beginning recording. Welcome to the risk meeting, May 27th, uh, whatever year it happens to be. I think it's 21 still, but I need some evidence. Um, so yeah, I thought I thought probably the best thing to do today would be to work on those proposals. And what I did in advance of that, and we have all of this info, we have the ideas here down in our meeting notes from like, I'm gonna like, this is, this is I just copied this from last time, right? Well, that was really our, those really are, were our May 20. I saw Sorry. it. That really was our May, that really was the May 13th meeting. Yeah, so, that, was, that was our last meeting. So I'm actually gonna like, uh, and I just deleted everything. Like who the people who were there were too. Um, it's in there in your version history if you wanna revert. Yeah, all right. I'm just, all right, sorry, everybody. I, I thought I did this at the end of, I always do this at the end of the meeting, but apparently I didn't last time. Uh, Arfan, welcome. I will let you, I, uh, Michael was here and I'm just, I wanted to respect your time and let you know today, we're probably gonna focus more um, pretty explicitly on our proposals for OSS Summit North America and OSPOCON. That's why um, I'm here. Oh, okay, all right, excellent, excellent. I, I know, okay, great, <laughs> perfect um that's that's good news then um agenda and, uh, i'm trying to like i'm collecting information in this meeting that i'm going to relay to my boss who's then going to send me to ospocon right oh that's yes. my plan i don't know yeah it's uh it's like my rough agenda that is how a good... i imagine this might work okay excellent excellent i know um yeah we've we've been uh having some good conversations with some of your friends over there at GitHub. So, I heard, I heard you've been talking surveys. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's like rock star city over there. All right, so I'm gonna copy our notes from, uh, the last time for, we talked about it. So these were the, Take this out. And Vinod had sketched out a couple of projects. Um, panel discussion. So it was okay, there's OSPOCON ideas. So essentially, one of the things we could do is just agree. So the top, so, all right, this is, this is the one that has the talk ideas. So I went through like a fake creation for um, OSS Summit North America. And really at the end of the day, we need the people and the abstract and a title for each of these. And the rest of it is just filler. Um, and, and so um, these, we had this document and then the large, the more expansive set of notes that are available in, in, um, in the meeting minutes. So for regular talk idea, this, this was um, really, this is focused on sort of the dependencies of risk that we encountered in the course of, of doing our work here and this complex matrix. And I think, so there's, that's one idea. The other was um, sort of, um, there's no abstract yet for not the best or only ideas. It's kind of like the David Wheeler idea. Um, and then there was a type of dependencies idea and then also something we call tooling salad. 
um, things that are kind of a, just a review of the different tools that could, this might be a separate talk. I don't know. I'm going to shut up now because I'm babbling and you all have the link. So is that this, in the notes or is that in the chat? The which? Oh, this I put it. This is in the notes and I did put it in the chat as well. But let me. Um, oh, Jesus. Look at that. I've still got like all the old people from last time. Michael was here. I'll give him credit. Uh, I'm not here twice, I swear. I think Bernard's on vacation. I did update my status for today. Yeah, I appreciate that. Tornadoes. Uh, we have a slight chance of tornadoes here today, so. Should know more about that in a couple hours. Um, so yeah, this was the, this is the link to the drafts. And I think I think any of these could be weighted towards OSPOCON or OSS Summit North America. The there was this panel, dis, so there was an idea for a panel discussion um, uh, Sophia, can you remind me uh, which which one of these ideas was the panel was this the panel discussion idea? Like just to discuss the different types of dependencies that people encounter? Maybe. I feel like in my head, panels are serve better when you're talking about your own unique experiences. Yeah. Um, so the idea that we're all dealing with dependencies in different kinds of roles, not just say software development. Um, so I would see it, the value of a dis panel discussion and sharing all the different ways that this information can be used and then coming together on what are the, the commonalities and metrics that can connect across all these different roles and use cases. Yeah, so how many people, is there a limit on the number of people that can be on a panel, do you remember? I think it's four and you have to have a woman or else they reject you. Oh, geez, yeah, uh, like, yeah, like, I am not proposing an all male panel. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a meme, as I'm sure you're aware. Well, I think they add that. It was I, I submitted a CFP for another talk, and within it, they, they tell you flat out that if there's no females in your panel, it, it's not going to get through. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and so the like people who I, I would love to have on this panel would be like you and Kate and Arfon and Dwayne O'Brien. Like that would be like the dream team for a panel discussion because you bring, you each have a very different perspective. Um, and I'm sure I can talk Kate into it as long as she's not conflict. I'm sure I can talk Kate into it. Um, this is being recorded so she can watch this later. Um, Arfan, do you feel, would you like to be on a panel? I really, I, I know I keep saying I want to bring my colleagues in the loop, but I keep struggling to like actually deliver on that promise. So I, I would love for that to be somebody from GitHub. I'm not sure, honestly, like I'm the right person just because I think there's such relative depth, uh, like elsewhere in the business, there's um, folks that just like build products based on dependencies. And like, I, I don't do that, um, right. even though, so, so I'm, um, I'm a little cautious, but only because I think there's people who are much better placed. So maybe if if we can, um, maybe as a like blood oath or something, I can go and like chase a couple of people after the call today. Um, I have to go in like 18 minutes anyway. Maybe in that half hour that I'm in another boring meeting, this is not boring. In a boring yeah. meeting, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, <laughs> word salad today. Um, yeah, that's all right, man. Well, <laughs> I've been in many boring meetings today. This is not this, one of them, but I'm about you, to go into another one. Uh, yeah. Maybe I could introduce, maybe I could send a couple of emails, try and get some uh, traction on this. Cause I would love for there to be somebody who's doing like some really deep, deep stuff at GitHub on this. And I think that's- some Yeah, people. and we have until the 13th of June. Um, okay. So, I mean, technically we have another meeting, but I don't want to wait until yeah. that other meeting yeah. to get some of this submitted. So um, I think if we had an abstract and a title, I, and that would also help in soliciting interest, right? So. Right, yeah. So the, the idea really, Sophia, if I'm 
is um, uh, it could be like, like the title could be something like what do dependencies mean for you and then for different roles for different companies or organizations discussing the role of dependencies with and I don't know just like different ways that tracking monitoring and knowing what they are impact the decisions you make how this how the data is used where it comes from like I just feel like there's there's so many different angles here so I guess in the description we don't have to provide the full set of questions but for someone like our phone who's trying to recruit people we might actually want to flesh out the topics that we want to cover as well just so they know what they're walking into mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming we get a moderator, like one of, yeah. uh, would you be our moderator then if you're not in the panel? Who, me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can moderate for sure. I'm good at that, actually. Um, and for those, I just want to, for those of you who don't know, Arfon is like the reason chaos, or like helped Matt and I conceptualize chaos way before it actually became a thing over dinner in 2015 in Copenhagen. <laughs> Was it a good dinner? I think it was a good dinner. I mean, it was good a deep, out of it. Yeah, I don't it was. The yeah. Meal at all, actually. I don't remember. I have no <laughs> recollection of the meal, but it could be a byproduct of the beverages that were also served. Was it? Was it in that place? It, <laughs> Friedrich that place in, Friedrich yeah, Friedrich. is that where like there's like no laws and stuff? Or yeah, like, it's like where it, you, that's it, where you go to buy drugs, basically. In Canada, yeah, like, consider like, so, they consider themselves <laughs> their own independent country yes, inside of it Copenhagen, was, and it was in like a big hall. Yeah, or yeah, like a, yeah. Okay, now I do remember. Yeah, that was yeah. Good, that was good dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, four panelists with responsibility for dependency management at large. Um, and then you said sort of specific questions. Yeah, I was thinking, um, one, it's overstating. I'm not actually responsible for dependency management, but I do query our with, build with, dependencies. Um, <laughs> like so so it's with, it, with um, is res responsibility is like, like nobody's responsible for managing all the dependencies, right? The way I meant that was more like- Well, maybe that's a question in it. <laughs> and yeah. just calling the, like out how, Maybe that's our first opener for this panel is just how broad is this? Uh, I'm trying to understand if there are clear delineations in ownership and responsibility, or how do you designate ownership and responsibility across something that is so complex? Like it's in its nature is dependent on other teams. Like I think, like when I look at a series of dependencies, part of it is just hey, does anyone know someone on this team? Because if we change this thing, they're gonna lose part of the thing that they depend on. So like, it's more about like internal, like seeing where we overlap with each other, but no one really is looking at it comprehensively because it's just too big. Yeah. At least that's our problem. Maybe if you're smaller, sorry, our friend, you were gonna say something. So, no, yeah, Sophia, I can't remember where you work actually. Um, when I was, well, can you remind me? I, was, I work at Google. I was going to say, right, so do you, not, do you not have a mono repo to solve this problem? Isn't like this the solution? A mono repo, to... did you say? A, did you say yeah, mono no, repo? I'm se <laughs> yeah, I'm semi-serious. Like, this is why, like, Facebook has a mono repo, right? Doesn't Google have the same? Doesn't this help? It's, it's similar, which is why I can query to, against it. It's just, yeah. it's massive, and mm. it it will time out on you. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess so it's, just, it's just, it's too big. So we can see okay. parts of it. And depending on how much time you've allotted in your script, you can see more of it. Um, but it's, it's not particularly granular and how, um, how things are associated. So okay. there's some controls over how you can look at stuff, but it's just, it's almost too big. Like I think if yeah. you're looking at the context of a project, then you can think about all the dependency against that project. But if you're looking at like the many to many problem, then that's mm -hmm. untenable. So I would say that we, we do have some ability to look at figuring out all the things that are dependent on and dependent of a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we can see as big as we allow for our script to handle. 
but it's it's just basically a huge graph so it just keeps going out yeah 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 like, it depends okay. on, this is why everyone's got those LG super wide like 40 wide 40 inch wide screens just so they can see the yeah. dependency graph yeah <laughs> um so part yeah I was also thinking part of the questions would be like how what are ways that you can proactively increase visibility to this problem um i guess the, not everybody has a mono repo <laughs> so I, I don't know i'd be curious to see how other companies have have tried to do this whether or not there's some sort of like we've talked a lot about sbonds um but if there's some other kinds of template or say build requirements that you can use internally as your own system of record mm. but I, i'd be curious like that's something i'd want to know from other companies how they've handled comprehensive dependency tracking. Um, I'd also be interested to know the nuances of how information around dependencies is used outside of a corporate context. Um, like I think one of the practical ones that we have is, especially in open source and maybe in some more recent news, um, there's been things like, like license changes where suddenly you have to realize, understand where, where and how things are entrenched in your systems. Um, that, so like basically an event could cause you to have to go look at things where you might not care about it before, clearly vulnerabilities. Um, but I'm wondering outside of the corporate context, are there other use cases that would predicate this kind of analysis and what would those be? So I guess maybe I'm plugging for if we can and you can edit the document directly too. Um, like I'm trying to paraphrase what you're saying. But. Yeah, and I know there's some, at least in, I think the open SSF has been thinking about this, but sort of large scale, many to many mappings to look at ecosystem concentration points and major vulnerabilities for maybe like for larger swaths of the industry. So knowing how like, particularly popular projects that are cross-referenced in many places, that if there are issues with those, they'd have a larger impact than other projects. So using sort of large scale, many to many mappings to identify major risk points throughout the open source supply chain. So that, that's a little bit more industry aggregate versus individual, but I think everyone, everyone has a story there. Sure. Is it, is it to understand the ecosystem level dependencies and, the, and then to translate that to an impact inside of an organization? Is that the way you're asking the question? Um, well, I mean, I think that it would, it would impact different people in different ways. So I think this is really calling out the need for our panelists to have a few different perspectives. Because now, now I'm thinking about the OSI folks, uh, or no, the sustain folks uh, that we're talking about this from a funding perspective. They look at who, who they're going to give money to. and something like a comprehensive view of very entrenched projects that have large dependencies on them and that say have any sort of sustainability risks, that could be a nice call to action for organizations like Sustain that are looking at investment and sustainable investing. So I think that's, that's distinct from say, I'm a company who wants to make sure that these things are working and my product doesn't go down versus I'm an organization who wants to support critical junctions in the open source ecosystem. I want to say the DeBrick company was looking at that as well. Um, met with Emil. Yeah. Um, but they were looking at it from a vulnerability analysis standpoint. Um, but also because of that, they were looking at comprehensive levels of multiple customers and all the things that they use. So they had a sort of objective third party view of popular things and how often they were cited across different kinds of organizations. All right, what do we think of what we have here? Do I have, are you able to say that you would be on this, Sophia? 
Um, I'll check with me at PR team just to make sure nobody's going to get upset about it. Maybe yep. I can nominate someone else again who might have a better view of this. We have a team that maintains a couple of our data sets that might be interesting to pull in. I don't know if they'd want to participate, but I can always send out some feelers because I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm more of a user than a builder internally of these kinds of things. I don't think that's bad. Well, I mean, my anecdotes are less helpful. Like the query structure is totally bizarre in this one thing. Yeah, the mono repo <laughs> is, uh, I've never heard of a mono repo. So I confess that just getting my head around that is, we can't hear you, Arkham. I don't know. No, no, I'm, I was oh, I... posing for effect. Um, uh, the, um, I, I know a lot about mono repos because GitHub's not got very good support for them. So, but some lot like, some companies with very large code bases, this is a deliberate decision uh, they make because it yeah. re reduces the integration costs of um, between engineering teams, right? Because basically sure. you run your tests and like your dependency, they're all smashed into like basically the same repo. So you just like all the code that you depend on to deliver your client app or like, I think Facebook does this. And so like the, the full, like the software that is Facebook is all just in a giant repo. And that's kind of how it is. So is the, is the, am I one of the four panelists if there's a limit of four from your recollection, Sophia? I think so there is a limit of four, but I don't think that includes the moderator. Okay. I have to double check that. Did we, I'm losing my mind here. Did we have a fourth person name? Oh, Dwayne, I would love to get Dwayne O'Brien. Um, I don't know if he is, because his he's definitely managing a unique challenge um, with heavy reliance on dependencies. Um, Sure, so the, pers ask. the person I'm thinking about isn't really responsible for managing dependencies at GitHub. They'd be responsible for building product features that help people manage dependencies. Is that also yeah, fine? Yeah, I think that's, that's perfect. I think yeah. that's a good yeah. angle. Like yeah. that's something we have represented here. So yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So All I'm right. hoping that I can get this person. Mm, thanks, Elizabeth. Just commenting on our limitations question of people. What is, oh, where is Oh, it doesn't, doesn't it say. Doesn't okay. say. <laughs> all right, yeah, that's, yeah, it I mean. Says I, you have to give the names and it can't be all men. That's all it says. Yeah, you, yeah, you get to, yeah, you go, okay, so there may not, like with speakers, there's a limit of two, right? Um, they won't let you add more than two speakers. I think there's also a limit on how many times you can submit yourself as a speaker. So that's also a consideration. Like I have only submitted one RFP for this event, so that shouldn't be a conflict. I think there's a limit of three. So like yeah. if there was say like a multiple that we wanted to submit, then I could only be on max of two. Okay. We will okay. also need to decide what um, to subtopic or, or topic that this belongs under. Um, which I listed in the chat, but it's also on that page. That's a question they ask on the when you submit your proposal. So yeah. just want to chat about that. I thought I pasted that. I, I went to the page. I thought I pasted the. They call it key topic areas, I think. Key, yeah, this one here. Yeah. So possibly this one. Possibly this one. I think that's for OSSNA and OSFOCON has their own set of key top topics. Yeah, well, what's interesting, it might be the same submission system. It's only been through I think one. it is the same one. Yeah, they because they, they've merged the events now. I don't know if anybody else noticed. They used to be like a month apart. Um, and OSFOCON was going to be in Seattle and this was going to be in Ireland. Mm -hmm was it? Dublin. Dublin, yeah. So, um, yeah, they've merged the events. So I think some of this is still a bit fluid. Um, I think that I, yeah. I'm assuming there's a human who's going to read it because in mine, it also is like between community and OSPO. So I just wrote that in the notes that like it can apply to either. So like. So one of these two. 
<laughs> one of those two, you think? Um, yeah, but I do like the angle for dependability because I think there is sort of a that angle to it. But I would say it's probably most relevant for OSPO. Yeah. Okay. I see a doggy ear. <laughs> the, the dog. Where? Who's got oh, Elizabeth? All right. Uh, she desperately wants to play because she hears me talking and she thinks I'm talking to her because she can't hear. Who else would you be confusing. talking to? Um, what they call these again? Key topic area. Um, Arfan, before we lose you, is there anything mm -hmm. else that would be relevant for us to discuss before you socialize this with someone else on your team? No, I think this is good. Um, I will, um, yeah, I'll report back. I, I think there's a, a couple of folks I think would be good. And it's going to be, it's in Seattle now as well, right? Yeah, yeah is, it is. Yeah, which is, is that where you're based now again? Uh, no, I'm in uh, Edinburgh in the UK these days. But oh. the person I'm thinking who would be on this panel, I'm pretty sure is in Redmond. So no excuses for like, yeah. not turning up, right? So I'm hoping Edinburgh. it would be an easy yes for him. Edinburgh, that's in Scotland, isn't it? It is. Yes. I'm, I'm a big Scotch fan. We may have to arrange a site visit. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's get on that. <laughs> it certainly would have been easier if Europe was open this year. But, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. So I will, um, I can just, I can just grab this text if that's okay. And Oh um, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, uh, it's free and folks. available and um, yeah. cool. All right. All right. Talk to you later, our friend. Yeah, see you. Take care. See you, folks. Bye. 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 Okay, so I'm going to bubble this to the top, copy it, and put it in our notes. Um, if we were going to help you edit it, where should we do that? Oh, right. Um, edit, edit, edit it in the, this document here. Okay. You know, I just, um, the notes will help me remember what needs to be submitted. Um, so there was, um, so this one is more explicit, um, what to measure, how to measure it, um, results of those measurements is the thing worth measuring. Um, and I think this is another idea that we thought was possibly a, a panel, but we weren't sure. So this, I don't know, this one seems more instructive. Be written. I'm just reading it. Yep. So this is more seemingly to showcase sort of our background discussions. Yeah. To help uh, get to a framework to start to measure this. Correct. Yeah, it's really, it really is. Um, I would, yeah, I think that's a really good summary is that this is um, uh, sort of comment here. So what, what would you want the call to action to be then? Would it be the, hey, do you have opinions on this? Join the working group? Um, <laughs> or like, I, like what, what would you want to come out of sharing our, our background discussions here? In my mind, I would, I, I think it all roads lead to the MVPs that we identify. And so it maybe closes with our 
proposed minimum viable metric products and a discussion of, are we right? Are, are these the right metrics? Are they not? What do you think of that? <laughs> trying to think what if i'm attending this what am i going to learn from it i get i get yeah. someone else's thought process on how to start to quantify it and maybe some recommendations of where to start so that's not terrible like that is something if i'm yeah. not doing any of this yeah i have seen talks like that before so that wouldn't necessarily be new um, so I guess what about this is new, I guess that's more than to. I feel like, I mean, I feel like none of us were in a common place of our understanding of these different ways that dependencies work. Yeah. That it took a lot of discussion to get us there. Um, you know, we had, we have a group of, you know, a group of fairly uh, experienced open source people. trying to get to a common language on a common problem. Um, I feel like, I feel like the ideal format for a session like that would be a, a discussion, but that's not an option for this event where it's like there's partial presentation. And then if we're talking about how we achieved common language, then the hope is also, does, is this common language resonating with you? Can we get feedback on that? So I think that would be a really productive session um, or could be, I mean, it could also blow things up, but it, if, if it's completely one-sided, then we don't get the reaction of, are we now our own little bias bubble that I do? Like, I, can I talk together, but we're still not able to talk to other people about this? <laughs> yeah, I, I've, so I've done talks that have been, you know, that I forget what they give you, 50 minutes is something like that where I've done like a 10 minute intro and then actually had people engage in discussion. And depending on the size of the room, I might divide them into groups. You know, spend 10 minutes like, you know, are we right? What is missing? How are we looking at this? What is, what is missing? Um, what is not your same understanding? What requires further explanation? Yeah. Um, I feel like we could propose something like that or propose the talk as a talk and just do that. Um, I think because of the hybrid format, I think that might be challenging because I'm gonna guess they're, they might force everyone to record oh, at that time. You're right, you're right. So that's the like, I'm thinking I always keep coming back to the MozFest example because that was the first session I read like where it was a live discussion versus a pre-record. Um, yeah. So it might yeah. be challenging to, I mean, it would, it would just have to default to a presentation then, I think. Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, we, we can do the setup and then if there's room in a virtual environment to have discussion, we'll oh. arrange ourselves. I think it could be an awesome chaos con discussion. Um, I agree. I agree. I made a I made a comment that I thought the risk group had a lot to share. With the I think it, again, like I think we've kind of gotten to a place where we have achieved commonality, but I love to kind of I don't want to say throw it up on its head and see what comes back down in the same place, but like oh, we need external we need external eyes on what the framework that we've identified. Yeah, because right? we were the same people. So maybe we've missed something from the beginning that would have changed our assumption. So I feel like in a hypothetical world where we are allowed to do this in person, this could be a really fun interactive session. Um, yeah. Just trying to figure out how to, how to split everything up and what are the common languages that we want to use. And then on top of that, the, these are the, the metrics that we recommended, but is that actually the most important for everyone here or are there others that could challenge it so i would i would love to do that as a chaos con session um i think assuming that's in person and that gives us also more flexibility on timing because we're not trying to meet the cfp deadline but i think it might i'm worried about it being generally 
helpful in sort of a, a one-to-many pre-recorded session a, as a topic like this. Yeah, it would have to be very well produced to be, because uh, it's, it's a lot. So this would be, um, I'm just going to say, I'm smiling at your well-produced comment. I've been, all the KubeCon sessions are now on YouTube. Uh -huh. um, and Some are not well-produced. Some of them were, were like really produced though. Like, yeah. like, like I was just like, like, like whoa, you've got multiple angles, you've got a background, you've got a soundtrack. And then yeah. like, I will say all perfect demos, not a surprise, but like, that's clearly nothing is live. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah, it was just like it felt. Some of them felt really produced. Um, yeah, so that was. I, I have started to really produce things. Like I have four webcams that I can plug into a different. Like I've got different whiteboards I can move to, and there's this tool called OBS. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. It's like uh, OBS. No, it's. I don't want to get distracted, but I'm not distracted. My production is just, can you see my laundry pile behind me? And OB, not, yeah, like, OB, turn it to the wall. OBS, it's called OBS, um, Open Broadcast Studio. And it lets you like have different, you create scenes with different cameras and microphones. And then you can connect, like I connect like a, a thing to it to, to move to scenes, and then you just edit it. That's so um, fancy. I've done it a couple of times for course videos. I haven't tried it for something like this yet. Um, but yeah, you can you can spend a lot of time and energy producing things like this. Um, so, but I, I do think that this would have this would if it's virtual, this will have to be really well produced. Yeah. Um, the third topic you had was on all the different like sort of the framework for different kinds of dependencies. I think uh, that's bottom. Yeah, that down here, yeah. It was called dependencies where out the dependencies of many types. Haven't written an abstract for that one yet, but I think I could probably pull, we could probably pull one out of things we have. Or like they don't let you put graphics in. For, no, not for an abstract. Yeah. I feel like Binod had some thoughts on this one, but I don't want to sign him up for something. I feel like, yeah. Because he, he so had mentioned interest. This is Dhruv, Dhruv, Dhruv is on the call. Dhruv, this is your Google Summer Code proposal, isn't it? Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say. So, I don't think the approach would be very appropriate because it was a very naive when I was writing this proposal, it was a very naive way of looking at things. I think we could make it better. I mean, I thought when we talked about it the last time, other people were like, yeah, this is kind of the inventory. Um, so with nine minutes left, abstract. So there are I'm probably misspeaking on the minimum viable pilot piece, but direct, transitive, direct, 
diagrams to uh, interdependent. circular and circular. Are there other types of dependencies, Sophia, that you've encountered in your work, like categories of dependencies? I mean, these are. Yeah. I mean, there's always a category of like, what is it? Is it a, like a in terms of the file type or category. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't even know if we want to get there in this because I think that can be too broad. Um, but I was thinking of, so if, you, if the focus is on understanding the minimum viable metrics or product metrics, sorry, I'm struggling with the word product here because we're not actually talking about a product, but. Viable. Minimum viable right? metrics. Yeah, let me call them minimum viable metrics, um, the MVMs. Yeah, so we could talk about the minimum viable metrics in this category and then the various dimensions that add complexity and context to their interpretation. So then we could talk basically about the discussions we've had around how to provide additional context within each of these dimensions. Um, is it on or of? Are we talking about looking at transitive dependencies? We can talk about that idea of breadth and depth um, and then how we might use those kinds of contexts to assign relative, like, well, for allow others to assign relative risk to what those things could mean. So basically saying these are the kind of kind of dependencies we're looking at, the kind of context and variables that can change how you measure them. And then what could those measurements mean for you? So basically it's a little bit more of a, a practical approach. I think getting into tooling could be a bit of a rat hole um, I think I would avoid it. Yeah, I was going to say maybe at the end we can say the project is also exploring tooling and put a bunch of projects on the screen, but then not talk about any of them to right. just acknowledge that there are many people working on this problem of measurement and visibility. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe we, we could give them a little credit on just saying this exists. This is a very popular line of thinking. Um, what we're trying to do is create again common language framework for an MVP of, of this. So I think that that sounds like an interesting talk to me. Um, I'm trying to get what you said down. Am I getting this right? Now reading. Are you reading my screen or your screen? I well, I'm both. <laughs> okay, because I was going to jump. No, I, I was jump I'm to reading our mine mostly because I I have poor vision, so I need to look at it in mine and then make it giant. Yep. So some, I need to jump back to the minutes so that I can get to our MVPs, which are really MVMs. So this is where we could put All right, all this seems like I don't need all that.
Sorry, I'm spending a lot of time editing. I don't know, should we just, I mean, do you, I mean, now that I've done that editing, do you think listing these MVPs in the proposal is worthwhile? I don't think we need to. I mean, I, maybe that's the, but I'm not an expert at getting yeah. CPAs accepted into conferences. So maybe don't take my advice. Yeah. I don't know the answer. I, I, what I like about it is that it's more specific. What I don't like about it is that it's possibly making the person who's trying to decide on a session figure out a bunch of stuff before the session. Like, like what does this mean? I see. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree that this is this is good for us in terms of whoever ends up doing. It. I guess we need to know who is doing it when we submit it, though. Yeah. We can't submit it as the chaos working group, or can we? No, we, I mean, I doubt, no, because you have to log in with your Linux Foundation user ID. Yeah. Uh, and they want bios for anybody who's a named speaker. And there can be two. Um, I mean, I'm happy to, exp I'm happy to participate in the explanation of this. I don't but I welcome other people volunteering as well. Um, I'd say maybe given that we don't have everyone on the call today, we could pose this description back to a listserv. Okay. And just say we, we put this together based on some of the conversations. I guess just summarizing what we covered today. We, these are the two talks that we're leaning towards submitting. These are the tentative speakers, panelists. Um, the third one we might, we would consider, but I think, again, my, my recommendation, I think that better, that fits better in chaos con. Um, yep. Just given that it's a little bit more free form and would benefit from a discussion. Um, and then, cause I think that if we have our descriptions generally ready, it's easier for folks to say, yay, nay, here's how you would tweak it. Yep. Um, versus I don't want to assign anyone something and then they're like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so uh, right. I'd rather it be volunteer Absolutely. dictatorship. Yep, I agree. So I think I, I think um, in very unconventional minutes. Uh, and let's if you do any editing, do it in the other document. This is just for the minutes. Um, yeah, I've been editing the other doc. Yeah, and so, like, uh, basically, this is what we've discussed. Um, and it's just going to not follow the standard format, and that's too bad. Uh, drafts, okay. All right, and we're over time by two minutes. And I know Elizabeth and I are talking to Matt so that we can all coordinate with each other in eight minutes. Um, I heard I, rumors they still haven't picked a location yet as of yesterday. I mean, that, that I I believe that's probably true just because uh, for ChaosCon, <laughs> I've been trying to figure, you know, I've been trying to figure out the locations so that I, I can figure out like I know people at Microsoft, I know, I know people at Amazon, I know people at University of Washington. Um, so like if, um, the website says Hyatt Regency okay. in Seattle. Oh. So, and, and Matt submitted a thing because um, you could request a room from them stri straight up from, from uh, the Linux Foundation. So he filled out a form to try to get us a room so we could officially be a part of the conference after or before. So yeah. Here's and hoping. it was, it was, yeah, it was a, I think it was a question of, um, if I remember from the common call, it was a question of how much that room would cost us. So I don't know where this is on a map. Anyway, we got to go, but uh, it's right. To, it's, it's, like it's right in the middle of the city. It's right downtown. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the university is a trek from there. Figure out by knowing. So, so I guess. Yeah, 
if hopefully the Linux Foundation gives us a room and it's very reasonable cost or they cover it as they have before. And if they don't, then we can start shooting for a backup plan. Uh, so good. thank you all very much. Um, appreciate everybody to digging in and helping to flesh out these ideas today. And I will talk to everyone soon. Happy long weekend. Y'all later. So yeah. Monday off. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy that Monday. Enjoy. Uh, all right.